Ephesians chapter 4, through the Bible, part 8. The Prohibition of the New Man. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Ephesians 4 verse 17 to 19. We have seen the exhibition of the new man and the inhibition of the new man. Now we come to the prohibition of the new man. There is the negative side of the believer's life, which I think is important for us to see. There is not enough emphasis on it. We talk about new morality, which is nothing in the world but old sin. There is a liberty in Christ, but it is not a license to sin. Scriptural prohibitions for the new man are different from some of the prohibitions that people set up. I can't find, for example, where it says that women should not wear makeup. I know a group who for years judged the spirituality of women by the amount of makeup they wore. I've also seen young girls who thought they were spiritual because they had disheveled hair and no makeup on, and actually they look like walking zombies. Christians should do the best they can with what they have. That doesn't mean, of course, that they should be painted up like a barber pole. However, some Christians insist upon a number of these man-made prohibitions which are not found in Scripture. God's prohibitions for the new man are the negatives of His Word. We have had too much on the power of positive thinking today. We need a little of the power of negative thinking. Have you ever thought that in the Garden of Eden the primary command was a negative command? But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Genesis 2 verse 17 Then you come to the Ten Commandments. They are very negative, but also very good. Now here in Ephesians we see some negative thinking, some prohibitions for the child of God. We are not to walk as other Gentiles walk. This is the negative side. Paul returns at this juncture to the practical aspect of the believer's walk. He had introduced it in verses 1-3, to but he was detoured by the introduction of the subject of the unity of the church. Now he gives a picture of the lives of Gentiles and the lives of the Ephesians before their conversion. Remember in chapter 2, verses 11-12, to he told how they had been far off, strangers without hope and without God, living in sin. That was their picture. This is still a graphic picture of the lost man today. Paul gives four aspects of the walk of the Gentiles which illustrate the absolute futility and insane purpose of the life of the lost man. In the vanity of their mind means the empty illusion of the life that thinks there is satisfaction in sin. Oh, how many people walk that way? I feel so sorry for these young people who have been taken in by the promoters of immorality as a lifestyle. A girl told me that she had had two abortions, murdered two babies, and was not married. What a life! That is not the life of happiness that God has planned for His children, my friend. It is the walk of a lost person, walking in the vanity of the mind. It is an empty illusion of life. Drinking cocktails is another illusion. Alcoholism takes its toll. An alcoholic woman has started listening to our Bible teaching program and is now fighting a battle to be delivered from alcohol. She says, Oh, it seemed so smart, so sophisticated to drink cocktails. How tragic. Having the understanding darkened means that the lost man has lost his perception of moral values. That is exactly what is being promoted in our day, a loss of perception of moral values. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them is a picture of all mankind without Christ. It is the rebellion of Adam which is inherited by all his children. What a picture it is of a man today. He thinks he is living. One man told me he spent a week's wages for one evening in a nightclub. What for? 
to try to have a good time. That's an expensive way to try to have fun. He was alienated from the life of God. He had no communication with God. He was dead in trespasses and sin. Such a man is ignorant of the inestimable advantage of a relationship with God. The result is a hardening of the heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, which is uncleanness, to work all uncleanness with greediness or covetousness. Their continuance in this state of moral ineptitude brings them down to the level where they have no feeling of wrongdoing. There are a lot of folk like that today. They are apathetic. The resultant condition is to plunge further into immorality and lasciviousness. This vicious cycle leads to a desire to go even deeper into sin. If you paint the town red tonight, you have to have a bigger bucket and a bigger brush for tomorrow night. The meaning here is to covet the very depths of immorality. Men in sin are never satisfied with sin. They become abandoned to sin. This is what it means in chapter 1 of Romans that God gave them up to all uncleanness through their own lusts. You can reach the place, my friend, where you are an abandoned sinner. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, Ephesians 4 verses 20 and 21. Here is the contrast with the life of the Gentiles. If anyone is not listening to Jesus, then Jesus must not be his Savior. The Lord Jesus is the shepherd, and his sheep hear his voice. If you haven't heard his voice, then you are not one of his sheep. What will change the Gentiles from their old nature? What are they to do? They are to listen to Christ. They are to hear him. They are to be taught by him. Those who are not his sheep will not hear him. When an unsaved man writes to me and says that he disagrees with me, I am not upset. I think, fine, I hope you don't agree with me. Something would be wrong if he did agree. The saved person looks to the Lord Jesus as his shepherd. He listens to the shepherd and he follows him. The unsaved person goes his own way. The truth is in Jesus. Although his life on earth cannot be imitated by anyone, the very life of Jesus is an example to the believer. Jesus is the one who has been the pioneer. He is the example of life here on earth. He is the one who also went through the doorway of death for us. There is no reason for any believer to be in the dark today, or to be ignorant, or to be blind. 